an hour for you. So um, any of our members out there would want to actually um, register for that, please do so. And um, what else have we got coming up on the 22nd of September? We'll be joining po Tova Kane for positive mindset and positive results. So it's another uplifting webinar and um, providing tips on maintaining real positive mindset. Um, next week we've also got on the 24th of September, it sees the first of our Worries, Wonders and Wins interview series. And we will be interviewing uh, Carolyn Stewart, uh, of course, Carolyn is one of Northern Ireland's most well-known broadcasters, and I'm sure Carolyn will just really provide a fantastic insight into her, her career to date. So um, that's a lot of the events that we've got coming up. Um, and also with Women in Business, we're really delighted to see the return of our uh, Women in Business Centre of Learning. Uh, so we actually have our developmental programmes uh, for members to really gain valuable skills. And um, so these real, um, programs are designed specifically just really to provide members with the opportunity to advance skills through leadership and uh, we've got communication, uh, resilience skills, just really to name what a few. So um, great um, personal and professional development opportunities there for our programs. So um, please do check out uh, all of our forthcoming events and our programs that are coming up uh, on our website, womeninbusinessni.com. Um, and just to check out and register for all of our forthcoming events. But this evening, um, we're delighted to have our women in agriculture. So um, we'll be listening to Kelda Crawford McCann. And Kelda is, runs her own production company and is producer of Rare Breed and has had many years experience uh, capturing life within the farming community. Um, so we'll also be joined by Ulster Farmers Union board member, Denise Kelso who will be explaining the role of the Ulster Farmers Union and also um, how you can be part of the organisation. And finally, we'll also be joined by Jennifer Hawkes, who is the Chair of Rural Affairs Committee for the Ulster Farmers Union. So I really am delighted to have you all here this evening. And I'm really looking forward to let's getting started. And uh, I really want to introduce Kelda here. And Kelda will also actually be um, answering questions after her talk. So if you do have any questions, please do drop them into the Q&A in the chat here below, and they'll be answering them after Kelda's talk. So without further ado, um, over to you, Kelda. Brilliant, thanks very much. Um, so first of all, I have to say thanks. Well, thanks for asking me to do this. It's, it's somewhat unusual to be uh, in front of the camera and um, speaking kind of face to face to people, as it were. Um, I never actually set out to run a business or to, to run my own company. Um, when I was a kid, basically a teenager, I um, always thought I wanted to be a lawyer. And um, I went to, I was very lucky. I passed my, I grew up in North Belfast and I, I mean, I don't come from a farming family and uh, passed my 11 plus and, and went to grammar school and, um, was basically encouraged to, to think of an academic um, uh, career path and um, profession. And I chose law. I thought I really wanted to be a lawyer and uh, went off to law school in Newcastle upon Tyne and very quickly realised that I was probably going to be the world's worst lawyer. Just did not click with it at all. Um, kind of um, thought, well, I've kind of started, I've got to finish, see it through. So I did uh, by hook or by crook. And um, at that time, I was also thinking, well, what do I actually really want to do? And um, I love current affairs, love news, love factual stories, journalism. And um, I, at that time, BBC was running a graduate training program. And I applied for that, and I was really fortunate to get a place. So um, that took me to Bristol, Belfast, and Westminster, and, and basically trained me in journalism, um, news. It was, it was all news. Um, but again, it was uh, perhaps the wrong kind of path I picked as a career. And I suppose the lesson at that point for me was, you know, no matter what stage you're at, and I've, I've certainly learned in later years as well, that you can always start something new. You can always choose a new path. You can choose a new career. And because I felt news was skating on the surface, it always felt, it never really felt that I was getting to properly talk to people, to properly hear people's thoughts, to properly tell stories. Um, I moved to Grenada in Manchester to their factual and documentaries um, unit, which was a phenomenal experience. Um, I don't know who's kind of watching this or you know what you know about TV, but basically this was kind of in the aftermath of 
um, a big series called World in Action, which was a phenomenal um, series that went out on, on ITV. And um, a lot of the people from that series moved to the, to the unit and I was working with them and, and I learned so much. It was, I got to travel so much, America, Turkey, France, all over the world. And it was, it was great. Um, but then kind of hit an age where I got married and um, I was thinking of family and the only place I could imagine having a family is back in Northern Ireland. So I returned to Belfast and um, again, at that point was working as a freelancer. So um, I, I worked as a freelance producer director, which basically means um, I was employed by companies to come in and make programs for them. Um, also expected to come up with ideas. I mean, our, our industry is really, the broadcast industry is, is, is quite, um, well, it, it, it's not very kind of concrete in the way it works. I mean, you don't really know from year to year what you're going to be doing. Um, it's short contracts. It, um, it, it's just not particularly steady. And um, unfortunately, uh, during the recession, um, work really started to dry up. And um, I was one of the ones in a company that was made redundant, which was a pretty shocking moment. And, you know, it's that point in time where you kind of think, oh, my goodness, I have no job. Well, you know, that is possibly one of the most, um, well, one of, one of the bleakest things you can kind of face. And at that time, I had two small children, toddlers. Um, I had a very supportive husband, thank goodness. Um, but it was, it, was, it was tricky times, as I'm sure people will remember. And it, it, you know, that's something very fresh, particularly at this, this point in time as well. Um, so anyway, I thought, okay, if I can't actually secure a job, I'm going to create a job for myself. And I'm going to do that by setting up my own company, um, which was really, I mean, for me, that just was a, a huge step and a really scary step. But I did, I thought, well, I'll approach this like a program and I'll research and I'll talk to people and I'll get people's opinions and, and hear what they say and what they advise. And, and basically I was lucky. Um, I, I went into BBC who were hugely supportive. Um, that's BBC locally in Belfast. And they said, look, we know you can do the job creatively. Um, we know you're a good producer director. Um, you do need to kind of um, think about the business side. Um, because although you have some experience with budgets and things, as a producer director, you're, you're clearly, you're not running a company, you're not running the business. So um, that alongside talking to some accountants who were very helpful in giving advice and, um, and warning of pitfalls and, and risks. But at that point, I kind of felt, well, you know, you, you kind of have to do something. And I was not, I mean, I was in the thirties at the time and um, I just thought, no, it's just go for it what can go wrong. Um, I went to Enterprise NI and joined the uh, Go For It program to do their business classes and to help build up a business plan and all that sort of thing. Um, and that was invaluable. That was, I went to Enterprise NI East Belfast and Kelly and Rory there were terrific. And, um, and it was pretty tricky at that time because obviously having a young family um, and it's really hard I think for women whenever the kids are wee um, to, to make that time but you know needs must and um, yeah I just plied on and kind of won my first contract which was with BBC a two-part series um, uh, which was following a, a pilot program that was being run in Northern Ireland for the rest of the UK um, and, and that went well but at the same time I um, was looking at UTV and I knew that UTV had a number of hours that they had to, to uh, give contracts to local independent companies. So I had went in and met the then boss of UTV, uh, Michael Wilson, who um, was actually from the northeast of England and from a farming family. And we were having a chat and I was kind of saying, well, you know, as you do whenever you're talking to the broadcasters, you're effectively your clients. And they are supposed to kind of draw a farming analogy. They're like supermarkets, basically. Um, so I was chatting to him saying, well, you know, what are you looking for? You know, what about this? What about that? And we're chatting away. And, you know, he sort of said, and I've always been interested in observational documentaries like Rare Breed and, you know, just that kind of get there, meet people, follow people, tell stories, let them communicate. You know, it's, it's trying to bring people together and have people meeting people. So um, Michael had kind of said he could never understand being from a farming background himself, 
um, why there wasn't more about the farming industry on television in Northern Ireland, given that agriculture is one of the two flanks of the economy here. And he said, look, you know, go away and have a think about it and see what you could potentially be pitching into us. And I went away and, um, I mean, it just seemed kind of obvious to me. It was the diary of the year. It was, you know, farming is so seasonal. It has such a distinct pace of life. And also, having done some initial research, the people in the farming industry are great talkers. They know so much. They have such passion for what they do. And it just seemed, it just seemed obvious. So we pitched that and amazingly we got it. And um, we filmed that first year and it was, um, it, it just was, it was just great crack. And, um, and we thought that was going to be it, just one series. And then the viewing figures came in and the audience, I mean, it is the audience and the farmers that make Rare Breed. We're very, very fortunate. We've got such a supportive audience. Um, and, and UTV said, well, let's make it again. Um, and that's actually why there's a year gap between the two series, because it wasn't meant to happen again. It was meant to be that was it. Um, and alongside that, you know, my, my company's grown because, again, as I say, you can't, um, you can't ever really fully predict what you're going to have next year. It's like it's this moment in time sitting here. I don't really know what work I'm going to have in 2021. I don't know if I'm going to have any work in 2021. And, you know, it's continually kind of pitching for business, going to the broadcasters, giving ideas, saying we should be making this, we should be making that. We're sending briefings, you're listening, you're planning, thinking, watching what's on television, what's working, what's appealing. Um, you know, that, that's how it works. And um, we're lucky because the company has grown. Um, we've gone really from two people, well, one person named my camera to um, then we've got 14 people working in the company now which is brilliant it's, it's really exciting we've got a lot of up and coming um young people young women coming into the industry and supporting them and, and training them and you know and also again it's getting into the ethos of we are there to basically tell stories we're introducing people to people um you know we're factual we're fair we're not rose tinted um but we also look for the positive. I mean, that is, you know, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try and tell positive stories? You know, yeah, good and bad happens within positive things, but, but you know, but the reality is why always hunt for the, the miserable, as it were? Um, and also it's always great, as we see with Rare Breed, to see people that know what they're doing, credible people, people that care about what they're doing, um, just doing that. Um, we've rebranded to change the company name, which has been a really, big thing for us this year um, I kind of thought we had to to reflect the growth the fact it's not just me um, and we picked the name Strident for a number of reasons I like the name Strident um, it kind of says what it is really and um, yeah that's you know that that is what we do at the moment um, I mean moving on um, I can talk a lot by the way um, you know in terms of skills developed um, over the years, you know, aside from the program making skills and the journalism and, you know, the practical like camera skills, I, I, sh I can shoot on camera. It kind of happened, again, for someone of my vintage, that's not um, a very common thing. Um, you know, normally most camera people tend to be male. Um, it's a male dominated uh, job within the industry. That's changing. Um, I accidentally started um, shooting on a camera. Uh, when I was doing a, a, a documentary at Granada and we were trying to get a shot and it was really awkward to get a shot, um, you know, a clear picture thing and um, I had picked up a camera and said, well, I'll nip around this way and do it. And I thought, well, actually, this is simpler than what everyone makes it out to be. And lo and behold, the footage was in the final program and, and so on and so forth. And um, yeah, so, you know, I've got camera skills. That's great. And, uh, you know, I really enjoy that side of the the work but that's it is also hard work and also you know it's the sort of thing you work as a cameraman that is a very specific path and you're, you're kind of tied to that I suppose the big thing for me is that it's been a really steep learning curve on the business side you know as I said I did the go for it program um you know and that but that that that's been a really great experience I think it's been quite a surprising thing because you know, again for me because I didn't see myself as a business person, didn't see myself as running a company. Um, you know, that was pretty daunting. And I guess if I hadn't been forced into doing it, I probably never would have tried it or never done it. 
and um, all I can say about it is sometimes you know it's um, you know it's just well worth kind of um, taking a punt, just going for it um, because it can be actually more fun than you realise, more satisfying, and you know it's like never say never really. Um, and I also think that there's a lot of transferable skills from you know being a mum, having a family, running a household you know, essentially running a household budget, meal planning, um, doing the logistics for the family, even with kind of a, a supportive, very helpful husband, you know, it still kind of is very much that still the female role. And um, the skills doing that, um, you know, they, they transfer effectively, you know, money in, money out, board planning, um, planning for the rainy day and all that sort of thing. And um, and also, you know, I swear by Martin Lewis as well, a money saving expert. And, you know, all those transfer across into business and you can develop and scale them up. Um, and also, I suppose I should say that doing Rare Breed, I mean, it's been one of the big privileges of that production, that specific project has been, again, I mean, the farmers that I have met, I think I have probably learned something from every single one of them. Um, you know, the, the, the main, like back in series one, I can remember going down to film with Alan Chambers um, big arable farmer um, down in East Down and um, we landed in and um, he kind of said look what we're doing today it's it's all office stuff it's pretty tedious and uh, you know but it's essential and he was sitting with like this program with like a five-year plan for every field and like he knew what was going to be in each field and the like the cycle and which fields were going to be rested and which crop was going where and and I thought mm, actually do you know what that kind of transfers across to your, your basic business your your swap your your board planning for that so that you know it was I find that fascinating and um you know and it, it's things like that there's so much transferable things and and also another thing I suppose you know um I've learned from the farmers and from filming a farming series is that whenever you're working in um, an industry where you can't actually control a lot of the variables, you can't control world prices, you can't control the weather. There, there's no point in getting hung up on that at, at you know the point of time where you can do you can do nothing about it. So you might as well you know not spend time worrying about it, and you know and don't kind of get um, caught into that catastrophizing, that kind of endless panic or worry. Um, because at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it. So do things about the things that you can do and um, or can change or can manage. Um, and I guess the other thing has been attention to detail. Um, you know, that, uh, again, on the farms and a lot of the, you know, that sort of everything's done in just a certain way. And if you don't do one element of it, then that can create issues further down the line. So, you know, taking time to think and think through and follow each kind of step that yeah attention to detail that's been something I've learned and I'd like to think that's a skill I've kind of developed um, and the other one which is funny one is, is the um, is looking after kit you know again that thing of like machinery tractors and so on you know if it's a rainy day and you can't get out in the fields then you know checking on kit and that applies with you know like my camera whatever it's like everything gets looked after so that's been another thing and I suppose I would say um, you know, grab every training opportunity that you can. Uh, I mean, you can always keep learning. And it's that always looking for information, looking for knowledge. Um, that, you know, that, that I think that's something that's really important. And you know, certainly with my team, like I, I brought a trainer over from England there at the start of August to, to teach camera skills to four young female directors coming through. Um, like I ended up sneaking in the back of the, the room to sit and watch because um, I think you can you can always keep learning, always keep learning. Um, in terms of capturing kind of life on the farms and those skills, you know, good observational documentary is about listening, and it's about not interfering. Um, you know, filming filming any series, it's always intrusive, no matter what you're told. Filming is intrusive. It takes time. It's never done in an hour or two hours. I'm sure a lot of the rarebit farmers can tell you it's really never done in a couple of hours. And, you know, and even if you're coming down for a day, a month, across a period of time, that is intrusive. And, um, you know, I, I guess you have to really um, also think about, you want to be part of the furniture. You don't want the, the, the contributor kind of really thinking, oh, cheapers, I've got this big camera pointed at me. And, um, 
and really it is i suppose the other side to it is um being mindful you're in a you're in a workplace environment um and i suppose it's also having a great team around you as well but it's not i suppose at all i know it's about having a great team of people and it's also you know i've always found in terms of my team like laurie and karen shannon who are working with me at the minute um you know it's having that kind of like a, a genuine interest i mean we love Burberry. we love going out in the farms um I think there's only one of us has actually got any sort of farming connection and even that only found out accidentally after she started working with us and um you know it's we love it it's it is just it's always fascinating farms are just and it's so kind of relevant to everyone because ultimately it's all about food but um right i'm talking way too much here now i'm just glancing at the time so um critically as well rule of women on farms um from the get-go, we really wanted to feature female farmers. Um, I mean, I realise there's only a certain percentage of farmers that are farms that are female-led, but the reality is there's a lot of um, you know those those farmers are very good. Um, but we had we had a real issue getting people recruited in the early days. We still do, you know, even previously there's still there's because and I put that down to the fact that um, still like even now women we we really are pretty crap at promoting ourselves and you know whether it's like cultural society or whatever in terms of you know putting the head above the parapet um it's it's not something that comes natural and really you know we we should be in my opinion women should be kind of standing up more and saying look this is what i do i do it well i know what i'm doing so you know here it is and um the thing was from series one you know i can think of so many farms, like think about like Cindy Wilson down in Fermanagh, and she's absolutely integral to that farm. And um, you know, Joan up at um, Wallace with Wallace Gregg, and and then you know, obviously, and I mean, really, I mean, I could name check and name check. I don't want to miss anyone out, but you know, to give examples, people who aren't necessarily kind of the lead person on it, but as units, and that's where I think farms and where women are so important within farms they are genuinely family businesses and the the whole thing works because it's a team it is a business and again it's those those um skills whether it's you know paperwork VAT returns um invoicing all of that is absolutely critical it doesn't matter what business you work in but that again attention to detail doing that that is you know it is just it is, it is just essential and then i suppose the other thing i notice with women on farms is you know, be out from the room or whatever and chatting to someone they go, Oh, do you know such and such? His wife really knows her stock. And you kind of go, Oh, right, okay, right. So that's who and you know, but again, I think that cuts to the fact that um maybe um then maybe it's a general Northern Irish thing is that people don't really tend to go here I'm great and I really know my stuff. Um and I think maybe we should be a bit more of it, in my opinion, because there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of skills, and it should be celebrated and it should be shared. I mean, um, yeah, that's you know my kind of opinion. Um, and I, the lovely thing this year with the series, a theme that's emerging is dads and daughters. And I can tell you now, the daughters, no matter what age they are, are more than fit to kind of uh, take on the, the mantle of their dads. And I mean, that's been a really fab thing to see and um and I, i'm hoping viewers will enjoy that next year um and yeah i suppose experience of working with farmers um as i said i i love reverie you know it's, it's a pleasure to do um hospitality and, and friendship shown to us on on the farms is second to none um there is a um i suppose it's also the knowledge, the sharing of the knowledge, the fact that it's people, you know, okay, there's ups and downs and maybe grumbles and good days and bad days, but ultimately, um, you know, it, it's people doing something that they really enjoy and really kind of take a pride in and try to do well. And that's a lovely thing to see and be able to kind of share with people. Um, and also I find that farmers, most of them are actually pretty patient with us whenever we're filming. Um, whether it's an observ uh, they're observant or what, I don't know, but um, you know they, they're quite quick to pick up on the fact is that filming doesn't just take 15 minutes. You know, the camera can never work as efficiently as a human eye, and you have to cut because it's not a drama. 
you know, we, we have to do things repetitively. That's why whenever kind of the farmers do some cattle, that's a gift to film because hundreds of cattle coming through means I can get the wide shots, the blue shots, the reverse shots, farmers looking at it, you know, so, I mean, it, it, it does take time. Um, but yeah, it's um, very, very, very lucky to do it. And uh, I really, yeah. I very much enjoy my work. I definitely made the right decision not doing law. So I really would have been the worst lawyer in the world. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Okay, so Claire, I think that's me for now, if that's okay. Fabulous. Thanks so much, Kelda. Um, I know, and um, it was really a lot of uh, good takeaways there from that. Um, but I was just wanted to see if anybody has any questions for Kelda. And um, if you want to put them in here, they've got the chat and the Q&A here down below. So please do. Um, but I have a, a quick one myself here, Kelda. It's just sort of, you've got so much experience now working or um, raising with, with farms. Um, have you ever thought of just maybe switching careers and doing farming yourself? I think, again, well, I think, yeah, I, I'm, I wouldn't be a very good farmer at all because I have no patience. And uh, despite after just saying that, I've kind of learned, you know, not sort of sweat the small stuff and worry about things that you can't control. My patience, I am not very patient. Um, and animals, I mean, it never ceases to amaze me that like sheep, take sheep for example, sheep never do what you expect them to do. I think sheep are probably the most tricky things to film like cattle, you can kind of get up to cattle and cattle will kind of, you know, look at you and they'll sort of, you know, obviously they're not helping you because they've no idea kind of what you're really doing, but they, you know, they stay pretty static and, um, you know, you can get the shot, but sheep, sheep will always go where you don't expect them to go. And even whenever you then go, aha, so they're not going to go that way, they're going to go that way, then they promptly go the other way. So I think, oh, flip, you know, the idea of like herding a load of sheep down and saying that would just have me kind of breaking in the sweat, thinking, oh God, they're all going to run away. So no, I don't think I could farm at all. No, you're going to stick to the cat behind the camera? <laughs> yeah, behind the camera and leave the farming to the people that kind of know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Although I have to say, Lorian, my editor, she, like every year she kind of says, oh, I really wish you could get a flock of Kerry Hills, which are these like really phenomenal looking sheep. And, um, but they're like they're notorious for escaping. But Lauren keeps saying she's going to get a flock of Perry Hills. So I think when she retires, if she ever retires, um, and she's not allowed to retire, um, she would maybe kind of invest in a couple of Perry Hills. Take up the farming. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, great, Hilda. Well, here we've actually got lovely some questions here for you. Um, um, oh, this is an interesting one. What would you tell your twenty-year-old self? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I would tell my 20 year old self to just do things and stop worrying what anyone else thinks. Um, I mean, you know, I'm going to be blunt. You see, even three years ago, if you'd said to me that I was doing this, I would have been, I don't know, you know, that, that would just put kind of the fear in me. And I kind of made a conscious decision over the last while that, um, you know, I needed to kind of just do things. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You know, people think you're a fool. Well, so be it, you know, so just do it. And that's why, like, I got involved in Women in Film and Television. I was kind of a founder member of them setting up in Northern Ireland. I think it's really good to be part of groups. You know, it's, it's really good to come together and to, to kind of get involved. And, um, yeah, so I would tell my 20-year-old 20, 20 self, just get on with it, give it a go, and stop worrying. Yeah. Good advice. <laughs> Um, absolutely. So, kind of, this is one here um, from Claire McCarthy. Um, what is the most memorable experience while working on Rare Breed? I'm sure you've had a few. Oh, okay. Do you know, I'm really conscious this has been recorded and I'm probably going to really embarrass myself, but I don't care. Um, I suppose, um, oh gosh, right. Um, mem right. Okay, I'm going to tell you a really embarrassing one because I'm going to kind of put my money where my wife is and just basically sort of, you know, show that you can do like that things and it's grand. See my very first day filming on Rare Breed. It was New Year's Day and I was up at Wallace Gregg's farm and it was like really early and that's fine because, you know, early in TV, we do early a lot. We do long days a lot. And um, yeah, so we were, I arrived up and um, I hadn't actually got welly boots sorted out at that time. I was wearing my hiking boots. So the shoes were completely wrong. 
and um, and then also I've been filming away, filming away. And the way our cameras work is that they click in to a tripod, right? And you need to hear a click, and that lets you know it's secure. Put it on. Didn't think it was secure, right? So did it again. Thought I heard the click. You know, milking parlors are really noisy, and I thought I'd heard the click. And the next thing is I swung the camera merrily around and the camera fell off the tripod, like crash. So me and Wallace were picking like the lens of the camera off the, the, the parlor floor. And that was like, so that was a bad memory. And I suppose <laughs> you know, like a good memory is, well, Balmoral show is always a good memory. You know, I love yeah, going I'm sure. It's and it's, you know, you get to kind of, and it's seeing kind of, you know, it's just seeing that whole kind of buzz and that whole kind of people together and, um, you know, and just like all the effort that goes into getting those animals ready. So yeah, Balmoral is always a good memory. I've got loads of good memories actually. Do you know what? I've got all they're popping in, but I'm going to stop because seriously, I know I like <laughs> to keep going, keep going. And I'm now really off grid. No, I, I'm sure you have so many. <laughs> I've got a good question here. Um, uh, Rachel Garrett. Um, I farm with my husband and work full time. I was a UFU Women in Agriculture feature this month. And firstly, really interesting webinar. Thanks, Rachel. And Rare Breed is great. Um, as a successful woman in a, and in a male dominated industry, what has been your greatest challenge and what has been your greatest achievement? Oh, flip. Yeah. The greatest challenge sometimes has been taken seriously as a female boss. Um, you know, even, even in our industry, is we, there's always kind of this, I suppose, um, yeah, basically, you know, sometimes as a female boss, you, you just don't get the same kind of ear of the, the broadcasters. Um, I mean, there's always slightly this thing of, you know, like, I'm, I'm like, am I just doing this as a hobby because I'm a, a, you know, a wife or whatever? And, um, and that certainly is something I've kind of, you know, that vibe. And I think that, um, yeah, you know, that, that's a challenge. That's, I mean, crazily, that is still, as far as I'm concerned, a bit of an issue is as a, as a, a female boss. There's very few female founded and led independent companies. And even in the ones, if you look at the wider UK, because um, funny, there was um, one of the leader, leading commissioners, uh, Channel 4, Danny Worm, was talking about this recently. And he said, whenever you sat down and looked at it, there's actually, there are, have hardly any female-led companies they're working with. And even the ones they're working with tend to belong to the, the super indie groups. These are like the conglomerates, you know? So that's mm -hmm. still, unfortunately, a bit of an issue. You know, behind camera, that's still an issue for women. And I'm sorry, what was the rest of the question? Because I've just gathered on there. Oh, no, no, absolutely. No, I think that, that's great. You've answered it well. Um, absolutely. The, um, and it is, it, it is, I think you're, you're, you're really shining a light, Kelda, really on women in the, in the production side of things too. So um, it, it's great to, to get your insight on that, which follows up on, uh, with another question here. Um, uh, how do you find working in what's seen as a male dominated industry? Any advice for young women in the production industry for getting their voices heard? Um, come and talk to me. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, look, it's got better in our industry. Um, it has got better. Um, I think the thing to do is. Um, Look, here's the thing. Whenever I went to Granada, in my first year of going to Granada, my then boss, actually, and I'm going to contradict myself in a way here, but my, my boss at the time said to me, do you want to step up and direct this, um, this particular program? And I went kind of in that typically female way. Oh, I don't think I can really do it. Um, you know, do you presume me in you know, a year or whatever? And I'm not sure. I'm, you know, I'm happy just to do assistant producer to produce it if you can, you know, put the director on it. I really regret that. Um, looking back on that, I should have grabbed that opportunity both hands and just gone for it. Um, and that's where, you know, with me and my company, I, you know, I ha I can. Well, there's four um, uh, members of staff at the moment who are all um, female coming through, um, all trained on camera. And it's all, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like I want to encourage them to just do it, just go for it. 
and um, and yeah, you know, you, you need to have a support mechanism around that because clearly, I mean, it's you know, it's it's a, it's a responsible job. There's a lot involved in it, but there's no reason why, you know, it's just just do it and just um, and really. And I suppose the other things, if, if that's someone asking me the question who is working in the industry at the minute, I mean, it's never been a, a better time, I think, for young and emerging female filmmakers. There's so many funds out there. There's so many directing opportunities, you know, in, in the independent, um, you know, film fund sector. And I would say, like, be looking at those and also get involved with women in film and TV. And also, again, because, you know, in terms of the actual technical kit we've got, you can actually make, you know, you, you can go ahead and make your own short documentary. I mean, that is, uh, you know, I, I can, again, I can think of some of the ones working with me at the minute. They've already kind of been out making things, you know. It's great to talk about things. It's great to write treatments up on paper. It's great to research things. But also, it's good to get out and actually, you know, do a bit of filming. Just make it, you know. That helps. Absolutely. Good advice. Thanks, Kelda. Um, and just another, not a few last questions before we, we, we head on here for um, the, Denise. So um, just out of curiosity, somebody has asked, um, how do you select the farms? Oh, okay. Well, that is through word of mouth and research. Um, you know, I, like, over the years, obviously, I've, I've now will know quite a few people within the farming industry. So, you know, yeah, it's it's asking people who's doing this, who's doing that, who do you think we should be talking to, um, and also, you know, I am a regular reader of the Irish Farmers Journal, Farming Life, Farmers Week, Farm Week, sorry, um, Farmers Weekly, and you know, I I read them all the time, and I'm always looking to see, you know, like oh, who's doing what, and well, that's interesting, and and then it's really a matter of we we you know we start talking to people, and we we see are they are they interested in participating? Do they want to take part? Um, and then we, we, that's how we work it. And then we try to get a spread, you know, across the county, across the sectors, yeah. demographic, and as I say, female farmers. We, you know, I, I would like to see more female farmers taking part, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah anyway, absolutely. Sorry. And there was this on another question here is, uh, were, were male farmers surprised to see a female in charge of the series? Do you know, the funny thing is, and whether it's because, do you know, no, I, I've not really had that vibe at all from the farmers we've been filming with. Um, and, you know, whether it's because also, like, so I've got my camera, which is quite a large camera, but whether it's because farmers also used to see women lugging bales of hay or sacks of feet around, you know, I've never had that thing of like, oh, let me help you because that's too heavy for you, dear. I mean, that that's not really happened on the farms at all. I did have one really... Um, quite entertaining uh, moment at one of the marts again I love going to marts um yeah um there was somebody come up now whether they were kind of pulling the leg or what I don't know but they kept saying where's Crawford <laughs> no I'm Kelda Crawford McCann where's Crawford you know so, uh, but I think that was maybe I was having my leg pulled but anyway yeah brilliant <laughs> oh great no, and yeah this is a really interesting question how are we going to get a female president of the Ulster Farmers Union <laughs> oh, flip. <laughs> Am I allowed to answer that? <laughs> I can think of okay, that one to Denise. I can put a few three. And I think, yeah, that's a, that's a question to the, the Ulster Farmers Union ones. Yeah. Absolutely, we'll have to get the dates there. But um, no, we're, we've got so many, to be honest. We're, we're going to maybe just have to stop there, Hilda, because it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, there, if anybody even wants to maybe follow up with any questions, questions I'm, I'm sure um you'd be delighted probably just to get in touch there because there was really some good uh advice that did you were given there to, to some of the, the um, attendees on it so really appreciate your answers there thanks Kelda. and um, we're actually just going to um bring denise in here now and denise i think we're just going to get her on here um and denise um if you want to just uh Go ahead and do your introduction with regards to the Ulster Farmers Union. Okay, um, thank you very much, um, Claire, for the introduction. Yes, um, my role here tonight is just really talk a little bit about the Ulster Farmers Union, especially for the people here that are maybe not um, familiar with the organisation. And I say just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I grew up on a 
farm, um, an arable beef and sheep farm in Newton's Church in North Tyrone. Um, I was always out helping my dad, um, you know, anything relating to potatoes and you know, the farm animals about, and also helped with my grandfather on the local dairy farm. Um, I always had a great love of agriculture and outdoors. So it was a natural career path for myself, I say, to go to Queen's and study agriculture and economics and management. Then following a couple of um, studies of working on farms abroad, um, I was just back and I did a management course, um, post, post grad in management. And following that, um, a job came up, um, seen it advertised in the paper um, as a assistant group secretary at the Milch Farmers Union in um, OMA. So from that there, um, my career progressed. And for then, for over 20 years, I worked throughout Tyrone, which was always the um, bit of a joke within the, the group secretary network um, that I had been all around the offices within um, County Tyrone. So during that time, I actually got to meet a lot of farmers and um, also um, great people along the way. But I made the decision in 2018 to leave the Farmers Union. Um, with just with commitments with um, four young children and lots of things going on here at home and um, I decided to leave but as I say back in then just about a year year and a half ago I was asked to join um, the board of Ulster Farmers Union because if anybody knew me um, knew that I, I, I always thoroughly enjoyed the time that I did spend working um, with the organization and also then being involved in the Rural Affairs Committee um, and say we have Jennifer Hawks coming on afterwards here as our current um, chairperson of that so I just want to give a wee bit of background here at Ulster Farmers Union. Just have the next slide, Nate. Okay, that's just a little background. Say we were founded in 1918, and um, as an, an organisation, that's just briefly our mission statement and objectives. Next. Okay, anybody who doesn't know, that's the headquarters of Ulster Farmers Union, which is 475 Antrim Road in Belfast. I think it was there, it had replaced a previous building, and also within that building, we have the um, young, young, young Farmers Clubs of Ulster um, take up residence. So it's on a busy road, but everybody involved really um, has, has been there a long time. So thank you. Next slide. Yeah, that just shows where our offices are throughout um, Northern Ireland. Um, there's 23 offices. Um, with so there's 25 groups, three of the groups are in County Fermanagh, which are based all out of the Niskellen office. So as you say, there is quite a big scope, um, an area, this thing where we're obviously we're in every county within Northern Ireland. Next. Okay, that um, is Chief Executive Wesley. Um, he oversees the day-to-day -day running of the organisation. That's a photograph that um, I took from somebody's Facebook page. He will really amaze us, but um, that's actually a very good photograph. It just we had our uh, our virtual come and um, drive-in ATM um, at the um, end of July up at the Icon Centre in Lisburn, where we have Victor Chestnut at now who is now installed as our um, president. Then we have David Brown from Fermanagh, who is deputy president, along with William Irvine from County Armagh, um, is also the second deputy president. And then just beside that, then we have Ivor Ferguson, who is immediate past president. Um, he um, lives outside of Market Hill, and he has just spent over two and a half, two, 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 two and a half years as president. Obviously, with COVID coming in, in um, April, or sorry, March, our AGM usually takes place in April, and that couldn't happen, so it didn't. So then, they through the, the good work um, of headquarters team, we had a great, um, say, drive in AGM, where actually, um, the the UF or the Agriculture Minister Edwin Pitts and Declan McAleer, um, the chairman of our culture committee, both spoke at the meeting or at the AGM, which was um, very well received. Next. Okay, that just shows some of our technical team. Um, they do sterling work um, on behalf of farmers within the organisation. Um, that's just all their, their faces and they say they support all the different offices so if somebody has got a problem that is a member then they're able to help and that's just showing some um some, some of their recent wins next okay um that's again just showing more of their successful outcomes cases that they had won uh, i think sometimes within the union we don't sing our, um, our trumpet well enough of the successes that we do do um we're obviously quiet about or sometimes about our wins but again, anybody that has been involved with the technical officers and have, um, have all been very, very appreciative of anything that they have done for them. Thank you. 
again, <coughs> sorry, this is our um, belief, our current policy team. So um, James McCluggage heads up the policy team. Um, and also then we then have got um, Daryl McLaughlin and um, David McClure, who is our more of our most, most recent um, members of the policy team, along with her Sarah Morell, who's been involved in organising this um, Rural Affairs um, Woman in Agriculture meeting tonight. So, and then I say there's Aileen and there is um, Patricia Ryan as well, um, Chris Osborne. Next. Okay, this shows all the different committees. There's, I think, I think it's 17 committees there is involved. So um, there's no excuse for all the ladies out there to get involved in this, uh, in Ulster Farmers Union. I say the people are always there on merit. So I just really encourage people, first of all, I say to come along to the group meetings where they can get added on to this. <coughs> I'm sorry, I've been caught. Okay. Um, I'll say some of the, um, not animal health and welfare with rural affairs, fruit, legislation, mushrooms, potatoes, seeds and cereals, rural development, beef and lamb, hill farming, dairy, pork and bacon, poultry, vegetables, environment, rural enterprise and fish. Next. Okay, this is showing some of the media that we use. So we have the um, different Facebook page. We have one that's dedicated to UFU members, which is a closed group. Plus then there's a wider one, which where they document a lot of things that are happening uh, out there and also say the daily news that's involved. Next. <coughs> Again, this just shows a bit of the democracy within the union. As I say, there are 25 group committees. And spiral up from that, we have six county committees where people then go along and discuss the various issues and bring, bring um, motions. Or, and also then um, a lot of the groups that were all the groups um, representations in the 17 policy committees where they discuss various issues relating to their specific commodity and from that then all the issues then are brought through then to the executive which they, again they're discussed and from that the executive then there is the board and I believe I might be standard corrected but there's 15 people on the board and we talk about ladies um, I at the Women Art Cultural Conference this year or last year um, there was Lady Joyce Barman Campbell come over and spoke and she said that in the NFU in Scotland, the Scottish NFU, that they don't have any ladies sitting on the um, the board of it, which she didn't think was very good at all. Um, well, within the Ulster Farmers Union, there is Mary um, Hunter from outside Drumahoe in Lump Derry and then also myself. So we're actually better represented in Northern Ireland um, with ladies in the are in Scotland. So next. Okay, that's just gained some of the other way, way um, the union um, involves, um, engages with members. So we've got serial competitions and then with silage competitions, obviously. Um, in the recent years, they have um, promoted through the membership and development officers, uh, the meet farmers at the marts. This could be people that maybe haven't really done go to meetings, maybe don't come into offices. And it's a good way to engage with grassroots um, farmers and members um, with issues that are out there and also trying to encourage more members to, or people, farmers to become members. And again, they also just um, talk about local projects and skills and run various competitions um, there as well. Next. Again, um, there's some of the, the benefits. Say there are 24 affinity deals um, in operation. We also have the technical officer service. There's policy officer access with group meetings and um, different there from social firms, quite serious meetings. Maybe we have somebody talking about um, a product and um, to meetings with the solicitors and accountants. And then also social activities like table quizzes and nights out bowling or go-karting and uh, just a, and breakfast as well. So sometimes they have breakfast meetings. So okay, and then usually with January, February time, we have President's Roadshow where all farmers are encouraged to come along and meet the presidential team where they uh, are, are able just to um, discuss the latest things that are happening throughout the agricultural industry. We also recently, in recent years, have developed the training division um, discount, where there's um, spare courses uh, available and other different courses um, that are available. And again, then there's discounts through the NFU mutual benefits, through mutual advantage, like maybe union advantage, like they call now. And then also discount, discounted tickets through, for Barmore Show through the local offices. And again, there's weekly bulletins come out. I think it's actually at eight o'clock on a Friday night. 
that somebody said that was the best time to engage with people through the uh, through the network um, of social media. So next. Okay, this has been a very successful group. It was launched in 2017 and it is for the Next Generation Forum. A lot of these people maybe in previous years have been involved in the Ulster Farmers Union. They may have been the past president involved in that, as you can see from photographs here as well. So it's just giving them, the, um, showing them how to, how, um, just an insight into topics that are really relevant to them. They're, are usually, they're all progressive young farmers. And we say we want to keep them involved and interested within the um, Ulster Farmers Union. And as I say, there may be some future UFU presidents within that photograph, as somebody had mentioned earlier. So next slide. <coughs> Next slide. Okay, that's again, that's just talking about the, um, the training division. So there's a safe use of pesticides. We have the boom sprayer course, the handheld applicator course, rodent control, and telehandler course, and chainsaw training. And all these courses, they are subject to VAT and they um, can organize through um, the number at the bottom. Next. Okay, this was um, the first um, Women in Our Culture conference that was held at the in autumn of or last year, which we held it up in Alamina. Um, so very successful um, conference, and these are aware the current um, members of the Rural Affairs Committee that were able to come along on the day and assist. I say we all had to wear those most beautiful t-shirts um, with Women in Our Culture, and we actually got a several men to wear them as well, um, which was great. Uh, so though I would say it was a very successful um, conference and anybody that attended it really got, thought it was very worthwhile. So much so that we hope to COVID all, all, all being well, we'll be able to um, next April and it was it's booked currently for um, the Glenavon House Hotel in, in Kickstarn as a central location. So um, we'll be sending out details probably in the new year all being well to that. So the plans are going well for it and the Rural Affairs Committee are very much involved in um, or trying to organise that again for next year, along with Sarah Morrell at the Union Headquarters. Next. Again, this is a photograph um, of the last, one of the last events I suppose I would have attended through uh, as a group secretary, where uh, Alison, who I worked along with in Dungannon, South Tyrone, where we had won the Mary Wilson Trophy. Um, so that's a trophy that I, um, I liked to win, as anybody knows. So I say it was overall best group performance and um, that was received in 2018 when the, uh, the say it was the, um, one of the last events that I attended. So that's actually the end, I believe, of the presentation. So, that's great, Denise. Sorry, Tara. I that's hope that was okay. Great. Oh, I know. Sorry, just takes me a wee while just to get uh, get these uh, these buttons here sorted. But uh, no, thanks so much. That really gives us a good insight um, for everybody with regards to the Ulster Farmers Union. Um, and you know, that's as you say. Hopefully, we maybe might see some future female presidents of the UFU coming through there soon. Um, and we're delighted really to be working really closely with the Ulster Farmers Union. I know you are. Um, spearheading along yourself and Jennifer and Sarah there, you know, the links with the women in business and um, to help and, and progress and, and develop um, opportunities there for women and um, to, to push forward within the, the business side of the, the farming community. Um, you know, spoke a bit further there also, so many of them are uh, entrepreneurs and, and taking up the, the reins of, of running the business there with the farm. Yes, no, I would I would always um, I've tried to encourage, I know I was involved through the Rural Affairs when we met Roseanne Kelly from Women in Business, um, about where we had the link where anybody who was a member of the Ulster Farmers Union and the, 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 the family could then avail of the membership of Women in Business. And I say I was a member of Women in Business prior to that and I found it to be great benefit. So I don't, anybody who's out there who knows please get your, your family involved and get them signed up because so, I think I'm actually signed up for um, Carlin Stewart's um, presentation next next week. Um, I already had done that. So it is, even with these webinars, you don't have to go out of your own house. So for, for time commitments, it's, no, it's, it's great. And I really appreciate that you, have, that you, do, that you do work along ourselves and, and, and the Ulster Farmers Union. 
and spearheading that. So uh, thank well, you. It's an absolute pleasure, Denise, and you're doing so much great work there at the moment. Um, and I really want to actually just uh, follow on there from yourself and we'll introduce Jennifer. Um, so Jennifer, if you just want to come on to the, to the screen here now, Jennifer is the chair of the Rural Affairs Committee for the Ulster Farmers Union. Jennifer, lovely to see you. Oh, if you, you're on mute. You're on mute. Jennifer, just take your mute off. Sorry, thank you. Claire, um, I've thoroughly enjoyed this evening and I hope everyone that's listening has too. Um, can I just, on behalf of the Rural Affairs Committee, thank Women in Business for hosting tonight's event. And especially you, Claire. And I know that behind the scenes, there's actually a man. Um, I'd like to thank Neil Dalzell for keeping everything running so smoothly, so smoothly over the, the course of the evening. And of course, um, thank you for the invitation to actually host a Women in Agriculture um, webinar and we've been delighted to be involved in all of that. Um, oh, I'd also so of much, course, uh, can I of course thank um, Kelda. You know it's been so interesting to listen to all the changes in your career path at the different stages in your life and to get an insight into your business acumen and of course all your farming experiences and observations that you've made across the years while filming you know, um, the rare breed. Um, I think you've seen firsthand the roles that women do play on the farms and that they are an integral part of the smooth running of the business, even if they don't realise it. You know, that seems to be the way family farms are in Northern Ireland. And for me, it's just sad to hear a woman say, oh, I just do the fat, or I just go out and help and rear the calves, or I'm the go for it. You know, all of those things, I think we do need to empower women more and give them the confidence to realise that without them, the business wouldn't run in the way that it does. Because often, too, they're the ones that do the cash flow projections and all of the, the forward planning. And even think about things like farm family succession and worry about their family's mental and physical health. You know, so I think, you know, they do deserve a good pat on the back. And they haven't realised that perhaps down the years. And of course, Denise, our own member of the Rural Affairs Committee, thank you for giving us such an insight into your career in the first instance and on your excellent presentation of all the structures and all the different committees within the Ulster Farmers Union. And I hope it does encourage some of the ladies that are listening tonight to go along and attend your group committee meetings and get involved on the committees. You know, because I think it's we need more um, diverse skill sets to be involved in the discussions and that should ultimately help then the decision making progress at the higher levels on the board or um, whilst you know our chief executive and our office bearers are negotiating things. So I do hope that all of their experiences in both business and agriculture have inspired some of you tonight to maybe take that leap of faith and just go for it. And you know, women in business are there as well to help you with you know um, new skills and just giving and empowering you just to have that confidence in yourself. If there's something in the back of your mind that's been niggling you and you think, I would love to try that. Well, Kelda has just said, go for it. <laughs> and of course, can I thank um again uh, behind the scenes we've had our own policy officer. Um, Sarah Morell working very hard along with Women in Business and also Heather Stewart, the UFU's events officer. They have done quite a lot of work behind the scenes as well in liaising with Women in Business and a big shout out and a thank you to them as well. And of course tonight, without all of you who have joined us, and I think there was maybe around 58 um, people have zoomed in, should I say, for the evening. Without you, the evening wouldn't have been a success. And I do hope that it's encouraged you to take that, as I say, leap of faith and come along as well and get involved in the Ulster Farmers Union. Because like they used to say years ago in the war years, you know, our union needs you. <laughs> so thank you everyone. And I do hope you've enjoyed the evening. And I do hope that this is the first of many webinars that we can jointly put together. So thank you again, everyone. I've really enjoyed the evening and I hope 
everyone else has too. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And, and just to, to final and um, really re reiterate from Women in Business, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And Jennifer, like you say, here's to, to many more. Um, and from, from our end, again, a big thank you to Denise and, and Kelda yourself. So two, two different uh, stories there, but it's great inspiration there to have. And, and with regards to, to myself, you know, my takeaways is always keep learning. I think Kelda, that you had said earlier, um, absolutely, it, you know, learning, it's a, it's a journey, it's never a destination and always keep at it. And as I say, we're really here with regards to women in business to help and support women to help in their professional development and their personal development and careers too. So thanks again, everybody. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again soon. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Claire. Thank you. And please do, I would say to all of our members, make sure that you keep an eye on your emails Look out for the Women in Business monthly easing. And of course, look out for our e-bulletin that goes out weekly and all of the information about the events will be there. So don't be afraid to um, do like you did tonight and join those webinars. You never know where it could take you. Great. Well said, Jennifer, thank you. <laughs>